Welcome to this nighttime exterior lighting quick start tutorial for V-Ray for Rhino. In this video, we take a look at rendering an architectural scene set in the evening. Open the scene file QS3B night found in the downloaded assets from the tutorials webpage linked below. Here I have the scene in Rhino 5 and it's set up to use the default Rhino lighting using an HDR4 illumination. Go into the Asset Editor and in the Settings tab, turn on Material Override so you can judge the lighting by itself with a simple gray material assigned to everything in the scene. Click and hold the Render icon and choose Render with V-Ray Interactive to launch an interactive render. The VFB opens as the house render resolves with the default Rhino lighting. In the Rhino UI, click on the Options gear icon and select Sun to access the Sun options, and then enable the Sun. The VFB updates, giving us more light in the scene. In the Asset Editor, expand the Environment section and right-click on the Map icon for Background and choose Clear to get rid of the existing HDR environment. Click on the Map icon and select the Sky Texture, and that gives us a nice sunny day. But we want a night scene, so in Sun Options, change the time to about 9.30 p.m., right around when I should be cozy in bed. Stop the interactive render. Switch to the top view. Now, middle mouse click for this dialog and then right click on this icon to switch to the wireframe view. In the V-Ray Toolbar's V-Ray Lights tab, click the sphere light icon and place one in the scene inside the top room of the house. Click the light to select it, and as you can see, I have the gumball here, so when I hold the Alt key and drag the light down here to this part of the house, it'll make a duplicate of that light near the dining room table. Alt click and drag again for another copy of the light to place here, and then again for a fourth light to be placed at the other side of the house. With all four selected, I'll move them back a little bit and then hold down Alt and drag over four additional duplicates toward the front of the house. I'll select all eight lights and group them together under Edit, Groups, Group, or by pressing Ctrl G. Now what this does is it's going to allow me to change the properties on just one of these lights and have it propagate to the other lights in that group. Now, you wouldn't necessarily want to do this if you wanted more individual control of the lights inside the house. Okay, now let's go to the right view to adjust the height of the lights. Bring them up toward the ceiling a little bit more, and when you're happy with that, switch back to the Render Camera Night view. Start an interactive render. And look at that, nothing's really changed. And that's because the lights that we placed are inside the house and the glass material is actually being blocked by the material override. So in the Asset Editor, in the Material tab, select the Glass Tinted Blue material, which is applied to the glass, and open the Properties section. Open the Options rollout and uncheck Can Be Overridden so we can get our glass back. Now, you're going to need to stop the interactive render and then restart the render to see the update. Here's the cool thing about grouping lights. With the one light selected, go to the properties and set a yellowish color for this light, and they all adopt that change. Set intensity to 500, and under options, make it invisible, and the lights disappear. In this part of the image, we need to disable the effect reflections to make that light source not show up in the render. Okay, stop the interactive render. I'll go back to Shaded View to better see the pod lights that we have here. These are perfect for using IES lights. Go back to the top view to position the lights easier and set the view to wireframe. Now I'll get in closer to the pod lights themselves and then I'll go back into the V-Ray toolbar and click on the IES light icon and click and drag to start creating it in the scene. Switch to the right view so you can set the height up into the overhang like this. Move it down to just below the pod light geometry and then make two duplicates and place them like so at the other pod light locations. Group them together to make it easier to update them all together. In the Asset Editor's Lights tab, we have the first one selected. 
in the parameters, enable override intensity so that we can specify the light's brightness over the prescribed value that comes with the IES profile. We'll set the intensity to 1000 lumens. Now click this icon to load the IES profile IES TS01 found in the downloaded assets. Now of course, all those changes we just made propagated to all three lights in the group like magic. So let's go back to the camera view where all the fun is and start an interactive render. We can't really see the IES lights, so set the intensity to 100,000 and you can see their profiles really nicely on that front wall. Okay, stop the interactive render. In the layers, enable the BG plate, which turns on a geometry plane in the background that has an image to fill out that background. In the asset editor, geometry tab, select grass and set the distribution per area parameter to 0.005 to turn on some grass that we've made for you on the ground plane. Then, in the settings tab, turn off the material override. Set your resolution to 1280 by 720 and turn off interactive and progressive for a final rendering of our night scene. Now select the render with V-Ray icon for a final render. Now, of course you should set your quality and resolution according to your system's comfort level, as this render will take a bit of time at the higher quality that we have here. For more information on resolution and quality settings, check out our earlier quick start videos. Now, I'm going to elapse about 19 minutes of time to get to our final result. Click the Show Corrections Control icon, and we can get to work on adjusting the final image. Now, I always recommend starting to get a good contrast range in your values first before moving on. With my curve, I'm going to add a lot more contrast for this night look, boosting the high end a little bit more than usual. I'll set the color balance to shadows to add blue to the darks and then push the highlights toward the warms for a greater contrast. Next, I'll add vibrancy to the render by boosting the overall saturation. Now click the Lens Effects icon and add a bloom effect for that photographic feel. Adjust these values as you see fit and you're all set. Go ahead and save your image and you can put it up on your refrigerator. And now let's try a different approach like we did in our previous lighting video and we'll use an HDR with a dome light. Turn off all the color corrections in the VFB and then turn off the BG plate in the Layers tab. In the Asset Editor Geometry tab, set the grass distributions per area value back to zero to get rid of the grass. In the Settings tab, set the resolution back to 960 by 540 and enable the Material Override and then start the interactive render. Now turning these things on and off is a good way to make your test renders go faster. You can see that we're back to the sun and sky lighting from before. In the environment section, turn off the environment to get rid of the sky's lighting contribution. In the light section, disable the Rhino document sun and we're left with just the sphere and the IES lights that we put in. In the V-Ray toolbar, click to create a dome light and place it in the scene. In the file dialog that pops up, choose the default HDR file shown here to become your new environment. And we're back to day, but if you decrease the intensity in the Lights tab for the dome light to 0.5, you get a little bit darker, but we'll need to go all the way down to 0.05 and we start getting a much more night-like feel. Now select the dome light in Rhino and rotate it to change the orientation of the cloudy sky to how you like it. I'm going to set mine here. I kind of like how that looks. Stop the interactive render and turn on the BG plate in the Layers tab. Turn the grass back on with distribution per area value of 0.05 and increase your resolution as you prefer. I'll go back to 1280 by 720 and then go ahead and turn off material override and also turn off interactive and progressive before you hit render for that final render of this nighttime scene. This time we're using an HDR of a daytime that we brought down to have a night look. I'll elapse about 22 minutes of time to get our resulting render. Go ahead at this point and enable the Show Corrections control again and turn on the corrections from before 
and make whatever tweaks that you'd like to make with this version of the render. I'll make a few of my own tweaks here before moving on to the Lens Effects button and turning on the Bloom Effect. And boom, there we go. Now that you have a good grasp of the basics of how this lighting workflow goes, of course, aesthetically, you'd want to motivate these lights inside the house with lamps or other architectural details like we have for the pod lights here outside to give a more realistic look to your render. Thank you for joining us on this nighttime exterior lighting quick start video for V-Ray for Rhino, where we use the sun and sky system and an HDR with a dome light to achieve our nighttime look.